Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker. Americans glorify horror to the tune of $1 billion every Halloween and think nothing of the spiritual virus that it spreads. The church response of trunk or treat is an affront to the scriptures and indulges the same spirit and peddles it as an alternative, full well knowing it's a cheap imitation of the cheapest imitator of all. Instead of standing against any indulgence, our churches have become parking lots filled with good intentions. Our next guest says it's time to say no to this and start standing up and fighting back against the spiritual battle that is consuming the minds, hearts, and spirits of our children. Kathy DeGraw is a prophetic healing and deliverance minister and the founder of DeGraw Ministries. She is passionate about releasing the love and power of God to empower and activate people. She's the author of several books, including Speak Out, Warfare Declarations, Who is Speaking, and Powerful Prophetic Proclamations. Here to talk about her new ebook, Why Christians Should Not Celebrate Halloween, is our returning guest and good friend, Kathy DeGraw. Kathy, welcome back to this fired up. I am, I am angry, and I'm going to use the term, I am angry as hell. I'm angry as hell over the fact that we have opened our church doors to the very message that we stand against, that Paul told us that our battle is not against flesh and blood, and we throw our doors wide open, we call it trunk or treat, and say, oh, that's okay. Come, little children, come on in, dress up. You're not doing that thing that's related to Halloween, so you're doing something because it's on the church property, and that makes it holy. Well, Kathy, that's like you telling me because I'm standing in my garage, I'm an automobile. That's right. That's right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi, for having me back on the show. I agree. We are. There's nothing holy about Halloween. There is nothing holy about Halloween. And what's happening is the people and the church is justifying this because of the roots of Halloween and the All Saints Day and the background of this. But there is nothing holy about celebrating the devil's holiday. And that's what it is, the devil's holiday. And it's time for the people to reveal the truth, to receive the truth, to believe the truth, and to live out the truth of this demonic holiday that we're bringing into our churches, our homes, and are infiltrating our children's lives, not just for the immediate rabbi, but it's infiltrating their lives for years to come in a matter that these kids need deliverance. This is why we have demonic episodes in goth teenagers and different things like that is because as parents, we're co-laboring with the very devil himself to implant this spiritual warfare in our children. I, I know many well-meaning pastors that are so deluded into believing that they are offering a viable alternative but it's not an alternative. The alternative is to stand against it. The alternative is not only to say, no, we're not going to even imitate because this is exactly, and, I, and I'll tell you where it began, Kathy. It began when we started in Genesis 3.15 and we heard about the seed of the woman. And we love that seed of the woman. And we knew that seed of the woman was Jesus. And that prophecy lifted us up and said that a seed of a woman will come and that will be our Savior. Mm -hmm. But just like everything else where we take the Bible and it's the pick and choose translation, we've taken half of that prophecy and we've neglected the other half. When was the last time you heard the other half of the prophecy? And that is, is the seed of the woman the seed of the woman will crush the head of the seed of the serpent. And the yes. seed of the serpent will strike the heel of the seed of the woman. When was the last time you heard that half of the prophecy preached? When was the last time you ever heard of the seed of the serpent? Not from any pulpit that I have ever seen. Not on any church sign. And I've been in every church. Hundreds of churches across this state. Thousands of churches across the world. Nobody takes the first prophecy of the Bible and tells the whole prophecy. They go out there and they preach Jesus. 
And now the father has been relegated to a supporting role as if Jesus came through the womb carrying a briefcase with the plan of salvation. You've got half the world of believers praying to Jesus. They've got their statues, their idols, their icons, their charm, their lucky charms. They might as well have, have uh, 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 you know, a box of cereal hanging around their neck. And then we have this alternative trunk or treat. Dress your children up, bring them, and I get a bulletin from a particular church and it says, we're so excited this year we are merging and we have an ecumenical ecumenical merger that our congregation and their congregation are going to host trunk or treat together. And they call that an ecumenical cross-denominational event. That's just opening the door to more spiritual warfare and more attacks because in the co-laboring of the churches there. You see, the enemy doesn't separate what we do. He doesn't separate that we're worshiping and praising and praying to Jesus on Sunday and then celebrating Halloween. To him, we are participating in spiritual warfare every day when we're opening and having these Halloween things. And now we're bringing in what we're co-laboring with, it, not just churches to bring in this collaborative effort of celebration. But what we are doing is we are co-laboring with the very devil himself when we allow this. And we are opening our churches up to spiritual warfare attacks. We are opening them up for the demonic realm to infiltrate our finances, our health, our children, our Bible teachings. We are opening them up to discredit our Bible teachings because now they can call us hypocrites that we're on both sides praising Jesus on Sunday and saying trick or treat and let's participate this on another day. Rabbi, that's no different than we can't just go to church on Sunday and love the Lord and praise him and then be in the world, in the secular world, the other six days a week. That's hypocritical. And that's what we are when we are participating in demonic Halloween activities. We are being hypocritical. And what is that showing our community? What is that showing the people, the very people that we're trying to win for Jesus Christ and evangelize. And that's where the churches are getting stuck. They're calling this an evangelism event. You, you know what I want to say to the church today? Get out of your church. Go out on the streets. Minister the homeless. Go in the malls. Go in the coffee shops. You're using Halloween as an excuse for your one, one, evangelical event a year. And then you never evangelize. You never do anything else you're not getting out on the streets. And the churches that are sitting here doing these trunk or treats, are you sharing the gospel with them? Are you telling them about Jesus Christ? Are you telling them about our Father's love? No, it's all we're doing is passing out a trap, giving out some candy, maybe just saying bless you, but we're not even praying for people. So there's nothing holy about it. There's nothing evangelistic about it. There's nothing godly about this event that we're bringing into our churches, except we're setting ourselves up for further spiritual warfare attacks. And I don't know about you. I get enough spiritual warfare attacks. I don't need to do something to open the door. We need to be closing the door to those. You know, it's so interesting that we have this message about the body of Christ. That behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And they say, look at this. Look at this gathering. Look how much fun these people are having at church. And I'm saying to them, they're not at church. Right? This is an imitation. Let me tell you, they're going to go into their neighborhoods and the kids are going to beg their parents to let them go door to door and they will let them go door to door. And guess what? They came from school already dressed up because at their elementary school or their middle school, they were already celebrating it. So they've been cutting out pumpkins and they've been hanging skeletons and their classrooms have been decorated and the educational system has endorsed this. But let me tell you something. No more Hanukkah celebrate. When I was a kid, 
Hanukkah, Christmas, all that. You sang carols. You sang Hanukkah songs. Yep. We sang dreidel songs. We did it all. We had the Christmas pageant. We had all the events. We had it all. I dyed Easter eggs as a Jewish kid right alongside my little Gentile friends, and they ate Hanukkah gelt, just like I did as we spun the dreidel at the table. And they learned about it all, and we all got along, and we were just fine. Then they took that away. They took prayer out of it, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. now everything else was introduced. Everything was introduced. Now you have Kwanzaa, and you have Dwalia, and you have every other, because if you're going to give this one, you got to give this one. But the church, the church is supposed to take a stand. You know, I remind people so many times that the American Revolution, America's independence, the war of independence, we're a young country. I've been alive for over 25% of America's history. That's how old I am. <laughs> That's how young America is, that I could be alive for over 25% of its entire history. This country was transformed because of, the, of the, what they called the Black Robe Regiment. The preachers in the pulpit preaching against England, preaching against tyranny, preaching against taxation, preaching against the state religion. That's who England was afraid of. They weren't afraid of the guys shooting at them. They were afraid of the Black Robe Regiment. That was where their fear was. Now, what's the fear of the pulpit? Oh, if I stand up against this, somebody's going to come against me and sue That's me because right. of my 501c3. And they've been lured into this lie and this deception. One of the greatest lines I've ever heard, as much as I am a lover of everything contained within the pages of this book, very few times do I ever go extra biblical because I spent 44 years in the extra-biblical Jewish world. So very few times do I ever leave the confines of the text. But I will quote from Batman 1. And I will quote the words of a Pitt, fellow Pittsburgher, Michael Keaton. And he said, if you dance with the devil, the devil doesn't change, you do. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. And that's what we need to convey to the people today. When we participate in these activities, in this spiritual warfare, in these evil spirits, we change. We take on, what does it say in the Bible? It says, put on Christ's characteristics. In order to put on Christ's characteristics, we have to be with Christ. We have to know Christ. We have to have that relationship. But when we're participating in drunkenness or in homosexuality and things that are contrary to the word of God, we are dancing with the devil. We're putting on those characteristics. We are. And that's what we have to look at. And we're afraid to preach about this from the pulpit because we want to preach about grace and love. And the pastors want to preach about things that are going to get their ties, their authorings, and their church growth. And anything that contradicts that, they just poo-poo away and they don't want to deal with because they don't want to upset the apple cart. Well, you know what? Jesus came to upset the apple cart. Jesus Jesus came so that we could have life and have it abundantly. And sometimes we have to preach the bold truth and faith. And sometimes we have to offend people to get them delivered, to get them healed, to get them set on fire for God, to live in that life. And so that's what we have to do. And Rabbi, you don't hear about this from the pulpit. Some churches may not celebrate it, but we're not teaching. Don't let your kids participate it. You know, we should not even have a harvest decoration on our front steps. We should not even have pumpkins out on our front steps because what happens in these ungodly practices is they put the fruits, the vegetables out on the offering, out on the altars, in front of the Buddhist temples, out on the sidewalks. And these offerings are to the demonic realm. They're to the demons. And as Christians, even if we're putting a pumpkin on our porch to the demonic realm, that is like we just set them out in an offering. Because that's what people say. Well, can't I just carve a pumpkin? No, you can't just carve a pumpkin. Anton LaVey, who is a founder of Satanism, says, I love it when 
Christian parents dress their kids up on Halloween. It's an open door. It's a legal right. It's an entry point for the demonic to infiltrate them. And as pastors, as teachers, as leaders, we need to be bold from our pulpits, speaking the whole truth, not just the truth that tickles people's ears, but the whole truth, the truth that's going to lead them to salvation, deliverance, and their spiritual warfare attacks minimizing. See, when I drive down the road, I expect the church signs to say, Jesus didn't die for your right to celebrate Halloween. Jesus died because you've overcome Halloween. Amen. Amen. See, the message should be on the board, but it's not. What's on the board is trunk or treat, meet in the parking lot, we bring your kids, all that, that's the big sign that's in the front of all the major churches. And it's an affront to the Bible. It's, the affront, it's an affront to the gospel. And what it's done <clears throat> is it's now become a billion-dollar industry. America is so enamored with horror. We've edified Freddy Krueger, The Mask, these, these horrid movies that are always absolute top billing, crowded, filled theaters because people love to be scared. Haunted houses. Haunted houses. And people, people who I know who are regular churchgoers thinks it's nothing wrong with walking in to a haunted house. There's everything wrong with walking into a haunted house because when you go in there, you can get an ungodly attachment, a transference, a defilement from the demonic realm. We have to ask ourselves, is this holy? We're called to live pure, holy, clean lives. We're called to walk in righteousness. And when we go into a haunted house, we are not exuding the love of Christ and the life of Christ that he intended us to do. And going in there, we oh, it's just an innocence. It's one night fright or it's a scary thing. It is not innocent because what happens is those spirits of scared, those spirits of fright, of terror, of night terror, of torment, of trauma, they attack your soul while you're having fun and you don't realize they're attacking your soul. Then you're going back home and all of a sudden having nightmares. Maybe something in your house starts creaking. You're feeling some physical demonic manifestations or you're being visited by demons in the night. But what you also don't know is when you are bringing your children to that, they are scared of that and that can last for years to come. I was with a radio show host on a radio program I was doing and he was 45 years old and he was still deathly afraid of snakes. And I said to him, why are you afraid of snakes? I brought in a rubber snake that day for a prop. And he was like, no, 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 get that away from me. And his sister had prayed a prank on him. And he still had that fear and that torment 38 years later. And that's what these haunted houses can do. Ghosts, goblins, going trick-or-treating when people have their yards all decorated or they have open coffins with goo or dead people dressed up as dead people in their garages. These are all open doors to a portal, a demonic entry point to infiltrate our soul. You may not feel it when you get out of that haunted house, but in three weeks, in seven weeks, in two months, in five years, these effects last and they manifest because what they do is when we go into these areas, they target us, they lay dormant in us and slumber in us, and then they arise and all of a sudden we don't know why we had a problem. It is because we expose ourselves to the powers of darkness and the Bible clearly says, give no place to evil, give no place to the devil. No, no means no, N-O, it's period, simple. Give no place, but yet we open that door by going to a haunted house. I don't know how anybody can say that they are a follower of the Bible and have anything to do with, and, and I'll tell you how, how insidious it is. Before I came to the Lord, uh, you know, I grew up in a, a Jewish family, um, the theater, Broadway, the, very much a, a, a tradition, a lot of tradition. Uh, when f I lived in New York City when Phantom of the Opera came, I was there for opening night 
of Phantom of the Opera. Amazing production. But 20 something years later, when it came to the Lord, the movie came on. I watched it. And I said, This is an homage to Satan. Come to me, the angel of the night. Come to me. Sing just for me. I'll make you famous. I'll be the one. I'll, I will. All the I wills of Isaiah, the five I wills of Satan's promises of how he was going to ascend to the throne of heaven. And here we have this is being piped into everybody's home. People know the music, they know the song, they sing it. Believers sing. They have no idea what they're singing, they have no idea what they're saying. They have no right. idea who they're paying homage to. And here it is, you say, how, but it's, it's, it's Phantom of the Opera, my goodness, this is theater, this is theatrical. Yes, and that's exactly how homosexuality entered the home in the 70s with Billy Crystal, this innocent, friendly, funny character on a nighttime soap opera show called Soap. The first time a homosexual came into your living room and all of a sudden then, became common, it became ordinary, and pretty soon it became a part of society and was there because it was entertainment. It was just entertainment, it was just innocent. Just, it's just innocent fun, it's just comedy, it's just something to laugh at. Well, now you wind up with a $50,000 fine if you call a person the wrong pronoun in New York City, or a $25,000 fine for using the wrong pronoun. Excuse me, my people did not come to this country in the persecution of Adolf Hitler so that we had to pick our pronouns when we walked down the streets of America. Mm -hmm. That's the same kind of persecution we left and we fled in the 30s, the 40s, while they were exterminating my relatives to come to the land of the free so that I could pay a $25,000 fine. You forgot I used the wrong pronoun. And my family didn't come to this country speaking English. And now you're going to be fined for the wrong pronoun. Look at how far we've drifted from our basic fundamental Judeo-Christian values to now we've given an open door to Satan to say, yes, please take our kids. Instagram, Pinterest will be flooded with children put on display as an advertisement for Satan. If people understood how much airtime costs and how much airtime Halloween gets, a billion dollars across the register in cash transaction, but media coverage I can tell you from Fox and Friends to every show is going to be following kids around. Their sets are going to be all designed. Every one of their news anchors, every one of their show hosts, all of them will be dressed up. All of them will be telling stories. All of them will be showing pictures, asking people to write in to glorify evil. That's exactly right. And I think where we have to really point out to people is that we don't glorify the cross enough. We don't glorify the resurrection enough. We don't talk about Good Friday enough. You know, the news anchors aren't promoting Good Friday. They're not promoting the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, the devil's not coming in and celebrating Good Friday with us. He's not celebrating Easter resurrection with us. But as Christians and as news anchors, we're going and celebrating the devil's holiday with him. That is just twisted and that is just wrong. And we have to not take a stand for it. I think what one of the problems is as Christians, we don't have boldness. We are intimidated. And I think there's a lot of people out there that like to celebrate Halloween. But I think there are some Christians that want to stop. I think there's some Christians that are starting to doubt it. They're starting to wonder. And so to them, I say, break off that intimidation. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, I've been not given a spirit of fear. And when you study out that word fear, it means intimidation. But you have been given a spirit of power and love. 
So we have power over the darkness. We have love of the Father. What we need to do is break that intimidation. You need to stand up to your pastor. You need to stand up to your spouse. You need to teach your children about spiritual warfare. You need to teach them as four-year-olds the truth between angels and demons in good and bad. That's one of the things that people are saying. What do I tell my children? Raise a child in the way they will go, okay? That's what we need to do, but we're not raising the child in the way they should go. Instead, we're allowing the darkness into our homes and even allowing this charade to be you know, on TV, on our Instagram, parents out there, even posting your children on Instagram. First of all, you shouldn't dress them up. Second of all, don't expose it. Stop all forms of participation. Don't hand out candy at your door. Don't hand out tracks. We should be doing nothing on Halloween. We should be praying and fasting. We should be coming against those powers of darkness and not participating, not only with the demonic realm, but the world, the secular world. We are not of the world. The Bible says that. We are not of this world. In Romans, it says what? It says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. We have to be transformation figures. We have to do something different. Come out of your box. Be who God is really calling you to be. You are made in the very image of Christ. It says you are made in God's image, okay? And God does not want his image participating in evil demonic Halloween. Kathy, Charisma House came to you and, and uh, you put this out in an ebook in just in time for people to be able to get it. How do they get this ebook? They can go to shop.charismamag.com. Shop.charismamag.com. Yes. Right? And you have an article in the latest edition of Charisma Magazine online talking about why, it's a summation of why Christians should not celebrate Halloween. We're going to take a short break and give you an opportunity to log on to the internet right now and go to shop.charismamag.com dot com. and download your copy of this ebook. It is not long, it is not wordy, it is direct and to the point. And if there are terms that you don't understand, it's time for you to come to an understanding that our battle is not against flesh and blood and never has been. It's about the spiritual realm. It's about the prophecy of the seed of the serpent. The rise of the Antichrist and his forces, his demonic forces. Oh, my child, my, my family has been a member of this church for 40 years. We'd never be a part of the demonic forces. We'd never be a part of the demonic army. You know, Jesus preached the parable about the sheep and the goats. And there are the sheep believers and the goat believers. And the goat believers do not enter heaven. And he was telling them, warning them. But they weren't paying attention. You, my friends, have not been paying attention. And now we're paying the price because our children are being pulled into, sucked into conformity. And if they'll conform to this world, then they've forgotten the message of God that says friendship with the world is hatred toward God. Whose side do you want to be on? You figure it out while we take this short break. We'll be right back. The Lord meets you right where you are, and so does Igniting Nation's new live streaming outlets. You can now watch Revealing the Truth, Revealing the Bible, and Prophecy Revealed simulcast live each Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Vimeo, Periscope, and through our website, www.ignitinganation.com. No matter what device you are using, our program will automatically scale so you won't have to miss a single program. 
And if you happen to miss an episode, you can always subscribe to the Igniting a Nation YouTube channel and access over 1,000 interviews and never miss your favorite authors, special guests, and topics that interest you the most. There are lots of ways to see Israel, but nothing compares to seeing the land of the book and the people of the book through the eyes of two Jewish believers who can take you on a journey that will bring the entire Bible to life. When you join Rabbi Eric Walker and his number one rated tour guide, Edo Canaan in Israel, you'll experience incredible teachings, first class accommodations, and actually walk where Jesus walked. You will experience the Bible transforming from black and white into living color, and you will never see the Bible in the same way again. For more information, visit us at www.ignitinganation.com forward slash events. The Lord contends with what contends with you, and Igniting a Nation is committed to bringing to light each and every issue that faces a believer's life. Our live stream programming and teachings take you on a journey to finding biblical truth from a wide variety of experts who share their insights into a deeper walk with the Lord. We have assembled the most comprehensive panel of experts in the fields of prophecy, caregiving, healing from trauma, shame, and abuse, and so much more. We continue to expand our teachings and programming to meet your needs. We're committed to healing the nations with biblical truth. Visit www.ignitinganation.com to develop a deeper walk with the Lord and start your journey to a transformed life. The Bible commands us to study to show ourselves approved, but most study using Bible study tools and not actually studying the Bible chapter and verse. Igniting a Nation is pleased to present Revealing the Bible, recorded and taught each week before a live audience. We take you deeper into the actual Bible and verse in both Hebrew and English and connect the dots between the Old and New Testament. You can attend our two classes in Tuscaloosa and Birmingham or watch the program every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Time on IgnitingAnation.com and all our other simulcast outlets. For more information, visit www.IgnitingAnation.com forward slash events. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, Messianic Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with Kathy DeGraw about her new ebook that you can get through Charisma, shop Charisma Mag, or shop.charismamag.com. It's an ebook called Why Christians Shouldn't Celebrate Halloween. Kathy, welcome back to the program. Thank you very much. I want to hit the audience up with the titles of these chapters so they know what they're getting into. First chapter, we must counteract the forces of darkness at Halloween. You see, the forces of darkness are being unleashed in our neighborhoods by your friends, your next door neighbors, by your pastor, by your pastor's wife, by your pastor's wife, your pastor, and your their children are ushering in the forces of darkness of Halloween. That's right. The forces of darkness, when they're seeing these Halloween decorations, when we got our lights on, when we're opening the doors, trick-or-treating, those forces are being ushered in. And what's happening is Christians aren't praying offensively against those forces. And as Christians, we aren't doing anything to combat them when we're being passive or complacent, when we're being lazy or slothful in our prayer life. And what we have to know is that there is a war that's raging. It says that in the Bible. There is a war that is raging. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, okay? And what we have to know is these are demonic entry points. There are portals into our region. And even if you're not participating in Halloween, you need to be praying and warfaring and protecting your home because as we are surrounded by the evil forces in our neighborhood, those attacks can come forth. And so we need to bring a bold message to our neighbors, start talking talking to our friends, our family, our children, even our adult children, and letting them know that this is an open doorway, an open portal to the demonic, and we should not be co-laboring with that force. Amen. Amen. The next chapter, there's nothing holy about Halloween. 
Yes, how, how can there's any, how nothing How can anybody holding. be confused? How can anybody be so <laughs> deceived by the counterfeit and the counterfeiter of all counterfeits? And, and everywhere in the Bible that there's an authentic, there is going to be a counterfeit is a guarantee because there is Satan and one-third of the angels that fell with him. Only a small number are bound in the abyss until they'll be released to torment men. The rest of them are wandering this earth, wreaking havoc on the lives of you, my friends. You are a target. No, you can't be demonically possessed, but you can certainly be demonically oppressed and that's yes. exactly what you're doing when there's that knock on the door and you open that door and the little child oh doesn't he look so cute you just open the door to usher in every evil spirit that's riding on his cuteness that is exactly right there's nothing holy about halloween and we go back to its origins and roots and we justify it i believe what christians are doing is they're just justifying they're justifying their sin they're justifying their participation and even when we look at the old testament it said you know, put blood on the doorpost, close those doorposts so that the spirit of death wouldn't pass by you. It's the same thing. We can apply that to now. Shut your doorposts. Don't participate. There's nothing holy. And why do you want to justify? That's what you ask. Holy Spirit created me a clean heart. Psalm 5110. Why do you have this need to justify it? Is it worth participating in a 24 hour day, in a two hour activity to open the door to demonic principalities that could last years to come? There's nothing holy. Shut it because God says what? He doesn't want us to be unclean. He wants us to be clean, holy, pure. Let's put the truth out there right now, Kathy. For the last 10 years, there's been a progressive increase in suicide. Okay, Why suicide? Why would somebody want to end their life? Because they are tormented. Why are they tormenting? What is tormenting them? Whatever it was as a child that they were exposed to. Oh, but, but we were just, it was just a bunch of people and, and Uncle Harry, you know how he put on that mask and would jump out to scare everybody. Yeah, well, it scared me to death. You know what? I took my life. Right. Yeah, it is. Suicide, what we have to look at is suicide is driven by demons. What do you think mass shootings are, you know, they are delivered by demons. Columbine High, we all know about that, okay? These men were possessed by demons. Demons came upon them. We don't know what that entry point was. Was it a trick-or-treating? Was it a haunted house? Was it a scary thing? And when we look at suicide, we hear people saying what? We hear the news, even the secular news will say their demons got the best of them. I remember when Robin Williams died, it said, the headlines were, the demons got the best of him. But what we look at is suicide. A lot of people with suicide, the demons are telling me to kill myself. And what's happening is over a course of years, over a course of time, when you are not walking in righteousness and victory and the freedom that Christ came to give us is those demons overpower. They engulf and they come out and suicide is driven by the demonic because why? Because John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's his mission for you, is to steal, kill, and destroy. Are you going to allow him to accomplish that mission? Because every time we open a door to sin, no matter what that sin is, no matter what that evil is, we are allowing the devil to come in and abort the mission, to abort the plan, to abort the call of God that you have on your life. And when we look at suicide, the number one call of that is demonic infiltration of the soul not of your spirit but of your soul that mind will and emotions and that physical body being tormented so much you can't take that physical and mental anguish anymore you know if we are going to be truth tellers we have to be truth tellers and if on this program we have stepped on your feet, we're going to ask you to move your feet. Because we're not going to budge from this pulpit. We're not going to budge from the words of this book. I love the supernatural. 
Dr. Michael Heiser said, if it's in the Bible and it seems odd or strange, it must be really important. Study it. You want to study UFOs and aliens? You'll find out that all those things are in the Bible talked about. You just have to read it for yourself. You have to understand it. You want to know about supernatural? It's all contained in here. You want to know about the battles? You want to know about the wars? You want to know about evil? You want to know about the power of darkness? It's all contained in this book. But if you're going to walk in the light and be the light, then let your light so shine that man would see your good works and bring glory to your Father in heaven. It is not good works by you going and walking out of your church, driving out of your church with your car and your children decorated. And if that's the definition of Christianity, I don't want to be a part of Christianity. I want to be a part of Jesus. I want to be a part of Jesus' teaching. And there's nothing about Halloween or trunk or treat that has anything whatsoever to do with God. When I look at what's going on with the North American church and the way we've drifted into the liberal side of every issue for fear of losing people. We want to soothe the poor ruffled feathers. You know what? Jesus ruffled a lot of feathers. He called my people the synagogue of Satan. He called the Pharisees a brood of vipers. He stood and flipped tables over and said, you turned my father's house into a den of thieves. Yes, your sweet Jesus said all those things and much more. And what would he say to you now? Oh, what happened to the days of WWJD? How many are still wearing their WWJD? What would Jesus do on Halloween? Well, you better slip that off your wrist because you're not going to put a costume of a ghost or a goblin on with your WWJD bracelet. You see, we've become so hypocritical, we've become so friendly with the world that we've ushered it in, and now it's normal. And you want to be popular. You don't want to go against the flow and against the grain. You want to be accepted. You want your children to be accepted. You want them to have friends. Well, what kind of friends do you want them to have? Because the friends they have now that you let them have are the kind of friends they're going to be attracted to later. And exactly what kind of mischief are they going to get into? And what will they follow? Will they follow what you say? Or will they follow what you do? So how do we pray through this, Kathy? We have to, first of all, pray for ourselves and pray for the Holy Spirit to convict and reveal the truth to ourselves. And we have to be open to receive that. We can't pick and choose as Christians which part of the Bible that we want to Amen. believe and participate in. And that's what we've done. We've secularized the Bible and we get to pick and choose whether we're going to, you know, obey it or not and what parts we're going to obey it. So I think the first way we pray through it, Rabbi, is by asking the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, examine my heart, examine my thoughts come in me create in me a clean heart we need to be willing to submit to the lord jesus christ we need to submit to the sacrifice that he did at the cross and the resurrection and receive that for ourselves we have to want what god wants more than what we want what we want and i think that's where we've got in twisted we don't want our lives totally surrendered to the lord jesus christ we want to say we want to say oh he's the lord and savior so i can get my get out of jail free card and my ticket to heaven someday but we don't want to totally be bold in our faith and change our habits change our desires for what the lord wants and i love how you said that on the wwjd bracelet because as i've been promoting this book on why christians shouldn't celebrate halloween 
Halloween. That's what I said. You know, if Jesus was with you, are you going to dress your kid up? Are you going to go trick or treat? In? Are you going to go through a haunted house? Because Jesus is in you. The Holy Spirit's in you. That hope of glory. He's here with you. He sees what you do. So it doesn't matter if he's in bodily form or not. He is with us all the time. And are we living our lives pleasing to him? But also as Christians, it's our job to rise up, to take our rightful place in a position and authority and dominion that Jesus came to give us. It says we have authority over all things. We have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all powers of the devil. And so we need to be speaking out, decreeing out. We need to be praying offensively. We need to bind and rebuke the powers of darkness. We need to be praying for our Christian friends to be convicted, for them to stop celebrating, for them to hear the truth, for people to be put in their path that are going to speak the truth. We need to be sharing this broadcast so that people see and hear the truth of this and not be afraid. We can't give a watered down message. We can't give a message of compromise anymore. We got to go deep and give the truth. And so as Christians, we need to do our part so that when we get to heaven, the Father says, well done, good and faithful servant not be held accountable of how we masqueraded Halloween and justified it for our own physical pleasures and even if we want to get into it rabbi you know there's so many things with Halloween is it's ruining our testimony it's ruining our health it's a multi-billion dollar industry and sugar is a breeding cow for cancer we're putting that in our kids and so besides the demonic effects we're wasting our money your money is kingdom money every dollar that you have belongs to the Lord and so when you're buying that candy or that Halloween costume or that pumpkin or participating in a haunted house you're spending the Lord's money on a demonic activity and so we have to look at now, are we sold out to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Are we sold out and are we going to live our lives as a representation and a presentation of Jesus Christ in each and every moment, not just in the moments that we choose? Amen. Amen. You know, there's those that are going to say, well, those two are so legalistic and so super spiritual and uh, they just need to lighten up because you know when two or more gathered in Jesus' name there he is right there in the midst of them and you're exactly right okay and if you were gathering in Jesus name then you wouldn't be celebrating Halloween what you'd be doing is you'd be celebrating deliverance you'd be walking yes. through and casting demons into the pigs and having the pigs go in and drown themselves that's what you would be doing if two or more were gathered in his name that's what you would be doing on halloween you would be casting out you would not be dressing up you wouldn't be acting out you'd be casting out right and we have turned this into oh well you're so legalistic you're so super spiritual oh you think everything is a demonic attack well, let me tell you something as for me and my house we serve the lord amen thursday night i will be in the pulpit that's exactly where i will be on halloween night at seven o'clock in the pulpit preaching the word of god you want to find Amen. me? You want to find me? Go to ignitinganation.com. Click on events. Look it up and see where I'll be, what church I'll be at on Thursday night. Not for trunk or treat, but for me to preach the gospel message that's contained within this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And I'll be dressed the same way as I've dressed every day for the last 23 years. That's with a black jacket and a black t-shirt as I stand in solidarity with my Jewish brothers and sisters over the loss and mourning of the Second Temple, the destruction of the Second Temple. And that's how I reach the rabbis in Israel, because I am a rabbi. And I talk to them about the gospel message, because I look just like they do. And they would not dress up, and they would look upon the Christians and say, Look at these Gentiles dressing up in their horns, their devil horns. And that's what they accused us of. And that's what they justified by putting us in the gas chamber and saying that the Jews had horns because they were of the devil. And here they have their kids dressing up with horns. But they're not putting them in ovens. They're not killing them for their horns. Why did they say we were so evil? What was it about us? No, this is a, this is, this is a sham it is uh, it's an abomination before God. 
And for your car to say, I love Jesus, and for it to be filled with little goblins and ghosts, you need to go home and you need to look in the mirror and ask yourself, how much do you love Jesus? Because I will say to you before the rooster crows three times, you will have denied before the rooster crows. You put those kids in that ghost and goblins, you are denying the power and the authority of the one who died for you. The name of the book, Why Christians Shouldn't Celebrate Halloween, Nine Teachings About Halloween by Kathy DeGraw. You can get it at shop.charismamag.com. Order it online, download it, and read it before you step in it. Because once you get it on you, it only takes a minute to get it on you. It might take a lifetime to get it off of you. Kathy DeGraw, thank you for your boldness. Thank you for speaking the truth. Thank you for being faithful to the Word of God and faithful to, as a minister of the gospel. Thank you, Rabbi. It was an honor and privilege. I just bless you and thank you for being so bold to preach the truth uncompromised. Thank you. God bless you, my friend. Maybe we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we'll bring you the next edition of Revealing the Truth. <laughs>